Hey everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Uh, this is my second time recording this because I wasn't too sure if it was recording my voice, so hopefully it is now. But um, let's uh, let's redo this. So last episode we looked at the battle proxy and setting it up, and we got our speed check done. For those who haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. But very briefly, we are basically just getting our current ringmon. We're checking for which ringmon has health. Um, whichever one has uh, health, we're getting that creature and setting it in here. Again, go back and watch the video if you aren't too sure on what we're doing here. Um, where's my event graph? I've got far too much open here. Let's close some stuff down. Uh, right. Um, and so we're getting that speed check. And then we're checking to see which uh, Pokemon or Ringmon or whatever you want to call it goes first. Um, we're going to concentrate on going down the player attacking first, but once this is set up, uh, the player and the enemy, theoretically it should work either way. But to begin with, it'll only work this way. Because uh, if the player isn't pulling its figures through, it's not going through into our player attack. So even, if, even though we're setting up the player attacks, it won't fire through. And I'm still setting this up so you won't see that working, sadly to say. Now, once we've got our player attacking first, we're getting our party active and we're setting that to true. So that it focuses the camera on our player. I did mention this last time that it happens in the, I showed the level blueprint is where this is happening. So go again, check the last episode out if you are kind of feeling a bit lost uh, as to what I'm talking about. Now, we're pulling a player montage first, and that's because we want to attack, we want to play our attack animation first. Now, I haven't got any animations um, or character models yet, so nothing's going to happen with this, so we're just bypassing it. That's what this is. But eventually, we'll do it on complete. So once that animation's played, we'll then. Uh, do our actual attack and at the moment so far it's just um, doing a check to see if it's dead or not if we've got no health but nothing's actually happening camera wise until actually after we've done that but what we would really like is for our camera to change focus to the enemy and play an enemy getting attacked animation and then setting its health so the likelihoods is is just here before we check enemy health we'll probably do a um, animation and things like that play out but we're we're getting ahead of ourselves let's not worry about that so what we're doing is once we've done that animation we're playing we're getting this player attacks which is a custom function we've set up and uh, we're, the, we're pulling through some information now we're pulling through the slot information that is coming from um, our speed check this is our selected slot this is the creature we've brought out depending on health it comes out and it goes in here we then um, get our current ringmon which is our enemy essentially that's being pulled all through via this here which we showed off again showed off in the last episode so let's go inside now and have a look. Now you're probably wondering where that integer is coming from. We'll get to it, uh, but it is important. It is set up like this for us. Um, I know a lot of people who've set their, their attacks and everything up so different to ours, but they all get the same result. So if you're following on with ours, we'll need it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna break uh, our party info struct from our party slot, our slot information. We're getting the slot information pull out, break that party strut info and get your um, basic information, our creature information, uh, which is like his name or in it, all that sort of stuff. We're getting the move slot. We want that move slot. We want to do a for each loop. It doesn't have to be with break. We don't use the break, but just get a for each loop. Um, and then we're pulling off from here and we're getting an equals equals. Now this is the uh, move slot. Num uh, index number that was given to us when we put them into the array. 
we see this in the battle widget when we are getting our information to set our buttons you can see here we got uh, equals zero equals one equals two equals three but remember ours is backwards so our last integer which is three sets up our move slot uh, one whereas um, our slot zero which is our first slot sets move slot four because they work one two three four in our design so this is one two three four so four all get set first then three then two then one um, now that's done we can go back to our battle proxy so that's what this integer relates to is what our move slot number is so to begin with we have zero and one we do an equals equals and we pull through and we add this into our player attack um, function node that way in our event graph we can set it to zero because we only want to get the information that's in zero or the move that's in zero same for this one is one and you can see over here that this is move slot three move slot four so floor is four is zero three is one two is two and three is move slot four um player attacks back into it so once we've gotten the move that we want to from our move slot we break off from this array element and we uh, get the break move slot uh, structure and we're then calling that data table row uh, which is the move list data table we, we created and we're just searching that move name via row name and then we're setting that um, as a um, we're promoting it to a variable to get and I call it selected move just for uh, ease of use once we have a selected move we can come off the completed and get and complete an accuracy check which is what we'll look at today for the accuracy check we're pulling in that selected move we're also using that final stats in here and we're also getting our current ring mon and we're adding that into there as well now i've tidied this up a little bit it was a lot more messier than this um so hopefully it doesn't look too bad um but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll go into the accuracy check first so while we're in our accuracy check we want to get our selected move and break that we want to get our final stats and break that this is uh yeah this final stats coming through um and then we want current ringmon we'll break in that and we're getting the final stats for our ringmon as well we're then getting our evasiveness figure. Now, this is a new variable I've set up in our final struct. It will house, it should always be one. I've changed a couple of things. I probably should show you actually. Let's go to our creatures and um, get our base stat struct. Uh, we've got a new evasiveness max and accuracy max is in there as well. So when we go to our which one's it housed in? Uh, it's in base stats. With our creature, we can set our accuracy max and our evasive max. Now, I set this originally to 100 uh, for both of them, but it won't work. It needs to be 1 and 1. Um, that's, that's just as a rule of thumb, because most of these calculations will run 0 to 1. Um, when they pick something so you need it to calculate via zero to one and not a hundred for example you could do it with a hundred if you're using an integer i'd imagine so we get that move accuracy from our move and we times that by our ring mons accuracy now i'm pretty sure the only one that these aren't set up for is uh, tackle tackle is 0 0.9 so it's like 90 percent and so whatever our accuracy is so if our accuracy is always one or a hundred this will always come back as 0 0.9 so we then need to amend it by whatever the evasiveness of our enemy creature is now unless he's using an evasive move it will always be one as well so the chance of hitting this move is always going to be 0 0.9 out of 1. 
So we get a random float between zero and one. Now we've got equals to or less than that number. So this random float has to hit above 0 0.9. Otherwise, it will miss. So if it hits 0 0.95, it will miss. So we have a 10% chance of missing this move, one in 10. But if it hits anything under 0 0.9, so let's say it hits 0 0.65, it will hit. And all we're doing after this check is getting a boolean to, to, to determine whether we've hit or not hit. So that's driven by this calculation here. Now, I've been trying to work out if evasiveness, how evasiveness works in my head. Um, from my understanding, if it's one and the ringmon or Pokemon or whatever you want to call it, Temtem, wants to be more evasive, it goes down to 0 0.9. That way, it's making your chances of hitting um, uh, an accurate move less likely. So if it drops its evasiveness by 10% and it goes down to 0 0.9, it will um, become, this calculation work out at like 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.8 I believe it drops it by 10% so it should be like 0 0.81 I believe would be the calculation uh, or if you want if we want to negatively affect the evasive to stop it from missing moves as much or make our moves more accurate we could increase that to 1.1 and that would be a 10% increase so it works backwards to, to the other moves basically so if you're setting up a move that affects evasiveness always swap it round so don't automatically think oh if I make it 1.1 it will make it better for me it won't it'll actually make it better for the other player for the for the attacking player so you need to remember that as a rule so once you've done that we can now go back to our player attack and uh, we just run a branch just to check if the move hit and if it comes back true we obviously hit now if we fail I should probably have a return node there that just kind of bypasses this. Um, so let's do that right now. Um, that should go in there and off of do, 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 do. slot info goes down here, doesn't it? Let's just drag off of this for a second. I'll need an up later. And creature do, 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 is this one. Let's just plug it in there as well. There we go. So yeah that's what should be there I've, I, I've never actually remembered that because actually it will just break the chain and, and ruin everything because this, this information won't get passed through and I found if you don't pass this information through correctly it gets very broken and very hard to fix so um, trust me I spent two days trying to do this <laughs> so we do a branch if that's true we run a branch through and we're then checking to see if we're using a status move now if we are it goes into a stat attack. Uh, but if it's false, it goes into a physical move. Now, I name these before I end up starting the enemy attacks, but these can't be used for your enemy. The way I've done it, it's um, you have to flip all the information. Um, so, yeah, it can't be used twice, sadly. I could have probably set it up at the time with a check to see if the enemy was attacking or... The player was attacking, and the best way to have done that would be using the booleans we set up for uh, the battle. No, the um, the camera change in the event graph. I could have probably used party active or enemy active to drive that, but to be honest, it's fine. We the way I've set it up is is it's not a bad thing. It's just an extra function in the code. Um, so yeah, so then we get all that information, and that's. And we're basically putting the same information into here again. We're getting the selected move, the party slot that's going in, and the current ringmon in. We're just adding an extra boolean into both of these. So if it's a stat attack, we're checking to see if we're affecting ourselves or if we're affecting the um, enemy. And for the physical attack, we're just checking to see if it's physical or not. If it's not physical, we'll be doing a special move. And that's all run through here as well. And then when it comes out, we're doing the enemy health checks, and then we'll return those nodes through to be used later on down the line. So that's kind of basically how it runs. Um, hopefully this has made some sense for you. Now, we'll go into these two in the next episode in more detail. 
uh, and the enemy health check probably I'll try and do all that in one episode it'll be a long episode and a long very painful episode but we'll go through it I'll check I'll show you how I mean by painful right now there's a lot going on in here um, but it does work the the one thing I don't like about this at the moment is that I have to do a root sap check I have to get the name and check it to do this move um, which is a move that's affecting both the player and the enemy um, I think my only way around it would be to create a second boolean uh, for effects enemy and have it set true and if both of those are true um, it'll go through into here um, and then we can run this and I don't have to technically run it as um, a particular check I can just do it as is at the moment which is the fact that it's just getting that move and affecting the enemy health um, but there's there's going to be options for here I probably will want it to be um, all of these up here as well and have it just affect both equally and, and I'll also add the health in the health is because it's an absorb attack so the absorb actually becomes a self and uh, enemy attack which will take health and give health uh, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on, but we'll look at this in more depth in the next episode and hopefully try and streamline it a little bit because it is incredibly messy, um, sadly. I mean, I could get rid of some of these checks. That would tidy things up uh, tenfold, really. Um, I need to fix this because this actually isn't set up correctly as well. And um, this is just... It looks messy, but it, it works. <laughs> it does work, I promise. Um, it's all it's all working so far. But, yeah, so I'm rambling. We'll, we'll look at this next episode anyway um, and get everything working. Um, and then once this comes out, we can then start working out whether the creature's alive or not, the enemy creature's alive or not. If it is, um, we can move on down the line to do the enemy attack. If it's false, we can then basically end the level and give some uh, XP and stuff to our creature. But yeah, thank you so much uh, for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Thanks. Bye.